So, good evening everyone. We continue in the uh, 51st chapter, excuse me, that is, um, the Kochomamosh, which is the second part of the 51st chapter. I say second part, as we mentioned, in the Lukut Yamarim, which is written, known to be among Chassidim as Teda Shebik Sab, the written Teda within Teda Shachsidus, the way it's set up uh, without the divisions, commas, and so on, uh, with much precision, there's a historical background to this also, not for now, maybe we did have mentioned in the past, but we, one of the things we noticed that there is no divisions within the chapters to the exclusion of very few, I believe like maybe four um, chapters which have a divide um, between one part and another. Like for example, Yudalid is the first chapter which you have this uh, division between the first and second part and um, there are others, I believe there's four if I'm not mistaken, I could be uh, stood to be corrected but no question that there's just very few, count, you count them on your hand and that's one one hand <clears throat> um, so they, they were holding B'Koch HaMamash, just having quickly said that, B'Koch HaMamash is the second part of the chapter 51 um, as we noted, that the first part of the chapter 51 is one mushal, is an example which the Al-Tarebbe begins with the question based on the expression of the Yenukah, that Yenukah which is brought in the fifth, 35th chapter. We actually mentioned the message again uh, of the 35th chapter in the very beginning of this chat of this uh, Perik Nunal, of the 51st chapter where the Al-Tarebbe quotes Lashonai Yenukah, um, referring to the um, re-quoting or re-studying in brief this message of the same Yenuka brought in the 35th chapter, which is extremely a fundamental message. Uh, you can see there as al Trebe brings in this Yenuka after a very important question which comes up, what's the whole point of the life of the Benini? And he introduces to understand this and he quotes this Yenuka Again, we mentioned also last week, uh, or when we began this chapter, the terminology of Yenuka, no need to go to it again, quotes this Yenuka, and with there he builds up this whole thought process of the virtue of Neshama coming down, just the fact that it connects to Teda Mitzvahs, even though it doesn't have the ability to total transform itself. That's the tzaddik, as opposed to the Bainim saying again a few tidbits of the, of the message there. But nonetheless, the fact that it can connect with Hashem, connect with Hashem's Torah and Hashem's mitzvahs, and that connection is greater than any other connection with the neshama would connect with and experience and engage with in every any level, if it's Ganeidin, Ganeidin, Atachdin, and Elyin, and no comparison for that matter. This is the entire Shechina, the entire the entire Ebishter, which is in the Mishnah, the Gemara, the Tanya, the Shulchan Aruch, anything which is categorized as Teira, and so too by doing mitzvahs. So again, that was the message of Peter Nun Hei, Lamed Hei, and onwards, and onwards, naturally. <clears throat> and Peter Nunal, again, quotes that same Yenuk, and he says, let us be a traditional explanation of this Lashna Yenuk, the expression of the Yenuk. We have to understand this, which Yenuk focuses, focuses in on, the Ashra Sashchino, the idea of the dwelling of the presence of Hashem, what does it mean Hashem dwells in a particular place, Kedush uh, as an example, the quintessential Hashra of, of uh, the Shechina, in the quintessential place where there was the dwelling of HaKadosh Baruch of the Shechina, which is the Kedush HaKadoshim, and any other holy place we choose say, this is a place which contains the Shechina, and al Trevor right away asks, asks Malaikalaritz Kivaide, Hashem is everywhere, everything is Hashem. And again, it's in, 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 not only because it says, we understand, Les Asar Ponimine brings it as well, no place which is the void of Gaz Barcha would be the void of Gaz Barcha wouldn't exist. There's no Asar, which is really Ponimine, there's no Asar, nothing, there's no place if it's Ponimine, it doesn't exist, it ceases to exist completely. So everything is there because Hashem is there. So what does it mean the Shekhinah is in a particular place? And with this, al Trevor goes on almost a page and a half of a marshal of a parable. And now we're holding to it by the nimsha, by the message. In other words, we're going to understand Mipsari, he quotes this Pasuk which says, Mipsari Echzelaka, from my flesh I'm able to know HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So it has a simple meaning also, but from the way it works within man, 
the way there is a system with the organism which you, of, of the human being, so too the way we can appreciate the way it's on high. And for that matter, the reason why it manifests in this particular style by man is because it's on high. Because this is the way the, the workings are on high, therefore it comes, it evolves from there and it ultimately manifests the way it works by, uh, down below. That we, our first approach, what we can appreciate and tap onto, tap into, is Mipsari, how things work down here. And there, we, from there, we're able to infer how things are on high. This is one of the this is Al-Tareb's introduction to this marshal, to this parable, to which he goes into the message over here, which will ultimately explain what does it mean, Ashra Sashkin, the dwelling of the Divine Presence. And generally, the Al-Tareb's conclusion of the entire Sefer of Tanya, he, these three chapters, no question, this is all one continuation, a continuum of chapter after chapter, which has an exclusive message on its own. And therefore, the Al-Tareb felt Latesis beer. I'm going to, I'd like to explain additional. With it, come up with a, uh, uh, share with you an additional explanation of this uh, Yenuka, the message of the the Yenuka, and Al Tareb felt as well. This is going. This message should be the conclusion, the finality, the conclusion of the entire Tanya. So he brings this mashal. Now, obviously, we're not going to go through the whole mashal again over here. Now, this is what we have done last week. Click away, like I say, mentioned to the newcomers. This, uh, you could find this class and all the other previous classes on this chapter and throughout the entire Tanya on this very website, tanyaonline.com. <clears throat> um, again, it's, it runs as a weekly also on the, uh, maybe you're watching it there also on the Arut Sheva, but the uh, original, probably you can click it there as well. The orig- it's it's uh, originally on the Tanya Online, one word, tanyaonline.com. And um, easy to follow. We always mention it's easy to follow the way it's built. Separate scroll bar for the text, and as such, easy to follow the class. And so, too, easy access to all the previous classes, which come up in the same manner, in the same fashion. So we go on the Kachamamash, which what, what, uh, are we allowed to take the time? But let's just see the, the crux of the message, basically. We need to. Because we're learning here, I mean, the truth is the matter is really, it's a click away. There's no rewinding and trying to find the place. Like in the SD years, uh, even like you know, a minute and a half of rewinding a cassette tape. This is really a click away, so it's not fair to add it, to to invest any time. We should right away go into it. But the crux of the message message of the previous class was as it ever looks at the nefesh and he says the nefesh. There's the way the nefesh encloses encloses itself in the body, and here we're talking about the nefesh, which is the vitalizing nefesh. Which, by the way, if you recall, in last week's class we had a very stark question. I must say I asked, I didn't get an adequate answer, or an answer which would adequately satisfy at all. Any of you would, uh, from uh, our viewers, come up with an answer, you could email. You see the email address right there. Um, uh, uh, and you could uh, send, if you have any explanation to this question we asked. It seems like the other was very clear that he's not talking about the he's the godly soul. And he's talking about the animal soul, or the nefesh chayyunis, the soul which gives, which is the same nefesh bahamis nefesh chayyunis, is the same nefesh, which is the vitalizing soul, and very clear and indicative. He's not talking about the nefesh likis, but then he says this nefesh, as it enters into the body, through its investment, the nefesh chayyunis, which is almost a little over the, the middle of the page one forty two in the original text. Through its investment, it comes into the body, through its investment into the vitalizing soul. We're talking about the vitalizing soul. The vitalizing soul, the vitalizing soul comes into the body. And it enters into the body. What does it mean it enters? The vitalizing soul enters through the via the vitalizing soul. It makes no, it's a difficult, the difficulty we had. And again, I asked, I looked, I didn't come up with a satisfying answer. Anybody from the audience which could give a satisfying answer, we would very much welcome it and we would mention it. Um, in the next class, Bezrat Hashem. So it's Tanya Roadmap at gmail.com. Tanya Roadmap at gmail.com. So the message of Al is there's a nefesh. With the nefesh is a, 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 a ball of energy, if you will. Not even that, it's, it's, it's a core of energy, which has no divisions and has no um, uh, um, a, a, a particular uh, um, 
objectives in one part of the nefesh over the other. It's, it's, it's not the divided the Lashon Al Terebi was. The Rebbe says Chas V'Shalom. It's certainly not divided. It it only when it enters into the system of the body then it sends off its energies to every one of the limbs, the organs. It starts with the 365 and then eventually 248. Excuse me. And then eventually the Taryag Kaches and Chayis of the Kaches and of the Nefesh, which is the all the organs, limbs, sinews, and so on. 613. Then it's divided again. You must see the previous class to see again the workings of the Nefesh, the way it enters. It starts off in the brain, which is we know as the nerve nerve system, which gets the core of the Nefesh. That's why the brain is not is more than a vital organ. The whole system of the nefesh is in the brain, in the nerve system, which is in the brain. And from there, it evolves and it becomes manifest in every single limb, which is the keli, which is the conduit, the, the container to that particular air, to that particular energy, which is the energy, for example, we give the example of vision and audio. There is a kayach of ri'iyah within the nefesh, kayach of shmiya within the nefesh, and that enters into the keli, the container of the eyeball, or the eardrum. And that's when, so, so in the end of the day, the nefesh does have these kayachis, and the energy which enters the eardrum is precisely an energy of the nefesh which establishes the whole audio system within the human being. So that it's not only, it's reflective on the keli of the container, of the difference of the of the eyeball and the of the eardrum and the eyeball, theoretically said that just one type of energy and then it's the container makes a difference. Obviously not, because the, because the container in the end of the day is just a container. It's a sensitive container, a very complex container, indeed, very complicated. The eyeball. Ask any any uh, any any eye doctor who tell you that uh, the uh, the uh, the the sophistication. And the eyeball is probably one of the most sophisticated limbs of the entire system of the human being. It's a true, it's very sophisticated and very complex, but it's the kaya It's a precise kaya or there's precision in this ayat of the nefesh, which enters into the eyeball, which has in it the energy of vision, not the energy of audio, and so to vice versa. So it doesn't begin from the container, it begins also from the Kayach itself, but that itself says the nefesh has multiple kayachas ultimately divided into taryag to 613. Indeed, true, granted. What, in other words, granted, saying that in the end of the day, it's certainly so that the nefesh itself, the nefesh itself has within itself also these taryag kayachas, these 613 kayachas, but that's only after they enter into the nerve system and they enter into the brain and ultimately begin to manifest, I mean in time, and then as they begin to manifest and they take position within the system of the body. Before that, the nefesh is pashut betachas apshitus. It doesn't have, you can't look at the nefesh and say, oh, that's the kayach of the nefesh, that's the kayach of seeing and that's the kayach of audio. That doesn't exist prior to the nefesh entering into the goof. <clears throat> it doesn't exist at all. It's a, just a potential. Everything is a state of potentiality. In other words, the kechavriya is potentially there. It's not something which is truly there, I mean to say that you can define it, a distinctive kechavriya. There's no distinctive kech of shmiya, of audio. And so to the other 613 kechas, not at all. Then you would say the nefesh itself is divided, inevitably. Because if you could say, that's the kechavriya, that's the kech shmiya, even you want to say it stands with a total expression or a, a total... Um, uh, in, in a very subtle manner, in other words, a total subtlety in these uh, the, in these riya, in other words, the kech of riya, vision or or audio, and the other six hundred thirteen keiches. In other words, they're very subtle; they're not that clear and distinct. But nonetheless, that says that the six hundred that that, it, that this nefesh is divided into six hundred thirteen keiches. And al Tareva says, no, it has to to say so, because then it's kind of, it has an image. Nefesh doesn't have an image. One way or another, you're going to have to say the Nefesh has an image. What type of image? Look like a body? Obviously not. But if you say you can define, in other words, the Kechas are definable before they enter the Nefesh, if you can define, that itself establishes that there's a seer, there's an image. Because there's only an image you could define. And this, uh, uh, if there's 613 types of Kechas, so it's an image of 613 points. That's not the nefesh. The nefesh is does not have a tzior. It doesn't have a tmus. It doesn't have a tabnis in the lashon of the Alter Rebbe, like the tabnis of the body, like the image, and the uh, uh, of of the body.
It's just kula etzem echaduchni poshut. It's a complete one. He says spiritual. It doesn't mean spiritual in the context of godly. It means spiritual. It means say it's a, it's a divested of anything. Uh, in other words, it's uh, metaphysical, totally removed from any seer, any any image, even a, even a subtle image. It's kuli ruchni, kuli etzem ruchni poshut. It's only one ball and core of light of energy. And only when it enters into the system, then it takes position, so to say, the kaya would come in a kaya from a state of potential to a state of actuality, and ultimately establish this eyeball, give the ability of the eyeball to see, the eardrum to hear, and so on and so forth. But the first station, as it enters into the body, remains the brain, which as we know it is the nerve system. And then from there, it becomes manifest in the entire body. Too much time spent in it, but this is the mashal that the Rebbe gives. He says even the heart receives from the Maya. That's why Meir Shali Dalalev. You can see it in, towards the end of the last class. And here we go right into the Kocha Mamash Al Derech Mashal. So too Al Derech Mashal, which mean, which is as an example. Though this would be a metaphor, as an example too, this message which we're going to <clears throat> try to appreciate that the Ein Sof Baruch the Infinite Light of Hakadosh Baruch Hu Malikol Amen truly fills all the worlds. Lach Yisam to give it life. Because that's the way everything can exist, only because there's an energy giving it life. And not only giving it life, a general life, but a life which is conducive to the container, or more specifically, that it establishes the particular style of this which is giving life too. The apple looks like an apple because there's a certain energy which is entering into this, into this apple, which has apple-like energy, which is creating the apple, which looks like the apple, tastes like the apple, and establishes the whole image of the apple with the seed, with the apple, with the shell, the husk, and so on. And so too the fact that the orange does not look like the apple because it's a new type of energy, which a different, a distinct energy rather, that enters into the orange, which captures or establishes it has to be orange-like because that would produce the orange with the way the orange looks like and so on. And this is, regard we're talking about the apple, the orange, we're talking about millions and billions and beyond that. Mm. Creations in this very world, now, before we even go into the, speak about the spiritual worlds, the Masiya Ruchin spiritual, the Masiya Yitzira, the Bria with Malachim and Shabbos and so on. But this is even something we can appreciate over here on this, this level, on this plane, is multiple uh, myriads, different types of creations, and the reason why they're so distinct of each other because there is a air which is memale, which fills each the entire system, starting from the almin itself. Memale kol almin fills in the world and everything which exists within the world. This world and all the worlds, lachyesam, to give them life, and of a cholaylam, as he goes on, the world, memalikol almin, and then he breaks it down. Yesh mekol of a cholaylam, in every world, yesh brim lein kates. There's infinite amount of, of, of creations. Lein kates v'tachlis, to no end. Ribu yirvavis minim adregis, tens of thousands of many different levels. Malachas and shamas. He speaks, he speaks, doesn't exclusively speak about Eilam Azeh, which we are more accustomed to. He says, even in Briya Yitzira, the world of the angels, the world of the Neshamas, it's, you know, like the Gemara says. Remember, the Gemara says that one place says that there is a certain amount, tens of thousands of Malachim, and the other one says that they, uh, and there's infinite amount of camps. And the Gemara says, in other words, uh, which would indicate that there's a certain, in this infinite amount of angels. The Gemara says, yes. In these myriads of numbers of one camp, but the groups, how many groups of Malachim there are? There's no end. No end. How can we have no end? How could we say no end? Even in an island, but no, because they're associated and receive their energy from a no a, a, a sof, an infinite a God which is infinite, so therefore Hashem could invest, infuse his infinity, even in an Eilam, and eventually it would manifest that even the Gdud of Ein Mispa, there's no end to how many camps there are of Malachim. You can't even say billion or trillion or even quatillion, because you're talking about Ein Sof, no end. It's a Gemara which says, the Gdud of Ein Mispa. He says, that's why he's a Bruim Lein Kates. And again, even in this world, we see the multiplicity. And he says, uh, so he speaks of Madrig and his Malachim and, 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 and angels and Hashem. It's, it's not limited to four Eilamas, three Eilamas. There's an Ain like Kate's of Wool. 
There's a multiple amount of worlds which have no end, and each one Goveo Goveo is higher than the other, which the higher becomes the lower level of the one, the um, higher than it, um, and so on and so forth, which means the lower one, the lower world is the superior over the lower world, lower, lower than or there's a world superior, higher than the lower world, lower, but it itself is inferior to its kind of predecessor, in other words, to the world before it, and that's a Lashon, Goveya al Goveya, also it's a Lashon in Tanakh. So there's no end of worlds as well. And why so? Because it's coming from the Ein Sof. The Ein Sof shares, so to say, its Ein Sofness with the Mamala Kal Almin, and it fills all the worlds. And that's why the worlds also have this Ein Sof idea. But yet, yet, nonetheless, it's not exactly the Ein Sof, the way the Ein Sof, Kimashahu, the way the Ein Sof is on its own for itself, by itself, because then, from the perspective of the Ein Sof, it can't exist any Eilamis at all. Eilamis, remember the Gemara, we quote it many times, Eilamis, Melash and Helen, has to covers up over the reality of God, and that's why it could take formation as an Eilam with different creations in it. May it be even Malachim. And may it be the, the, most, the most sophisticated or celestial created beings, or sophisticated created beings, created beings they are, and that truly doesn't exist in the Ein Sof. So when Hashem is Memalakalami of this duality, like on one hand, you have the multiple, you have multiplicity of the many. You have creations and Yivroim don't exist in the face of Ein Sof. You remember we spoke about the 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 Tzimtzumarish and Hashem had to remove the Ein Sof. There should be any level of illness. And but nonetheless, because in the and the, and therefore it's the whole mitzvah of illness is where when there is a removal of the Ein Sof. If it's the illness and even the multiple malachim and shamis and everything exists within illness. And even the infinite levels, like we said about the Nisham, of Malachim and the Gdudim, in other words, the camps and so on, it's infinite. But nonetheless, the fact that there's a Malach, a Malach in itself cannot stand in the face of an infinity. That's why they have to be the Tzimtzum HaGod, the Tzimtzum Marishin, brought in Eitz Yishchayim, the Altar Bukot Tzimtzum And again, this becomes a premise, a, a predicate to this whole Seyder Ishtalshlus, um, or this which Chassidus explains us, about the ability there could be elements in the face of the Ein Sof because there was the Tzimtzum Harishen, but that tells us ultimately that there can't be Bichlal at all, not only expression of infinity, there can't be anything at all, or not only anything finite, but even the finite in a manner of infinite can also not exist in the face of true pure infinity. There can't be a, a, a malach, for example, when in the face of infinity, because a malach is a metzius, it's an entity, and any entity cannot stand in the presence of the infinite. This is common sense. But nonetheless, as Hashem removed his Eira Bilti Balgvul Alatzad, so to say that was the Tzimtzum Manishan, and eventually he decided to become the Memalek Halalman to invest in Eilamis, to allow Eilamis to be created, and the Malachim, and the Shamis, and the, all the multiple cre- creation, created beings, in each Eilam, in each world, based on the style and spirit of the world. But nonetheless, because it's the Ein Sof, which is Mahava Machai Mekayim, which is giving it life and existence, therefore, the way they're created also is an Ein Sof manner. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean in other words, it doesn't mean because, it, oh, Hashem decided to block his Ein Sof in order to create Eilam, therefore, there can never be an Ein Sof expression in any of the Eilams, not so. Because in the end of the day, it's Hashem, which is Mamalakalam. Mamalakalam doesn't have any independent, <clears throat> independent, Source, there's no chas v'shalom, like two energies, two forces, mamalakalam, masevikalam, the way the Vavish does mamalim, the way he's for himself by himself. No, maybe on the surface, that's what we say every day. Remember, we say the shem yichud kuchu brichu shchinte. There's a kuchu brichu dimension, there's the shchinte dimension. The point is to fuse them together, asara, asara, shakaf, b'shekel, akedish, not to go into it now, but at the end of the day, it's Hashem creating. Hashem Rime is, is by definition Ein Sof, so there could be an Ein Sof expression in this very finite, so to say, presentation that he is allowing to exist and happen. And that's where you see that Ligdud of Ein Mispar, as al Trevor says, how many Eilamas? Ein Kates. There is no end to how many Eilamas. Really? Aren't Eilamas about the finite? Yes, but it's an infinite creator, or creator, which is infinite, and therefore you have the expression of infinite in the finite. So we go on. The core essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is equal. 
and the supreme, and then the inferior, the superior and the inferior, the supreme worlds and the inferior worlds, or bechlal, in any level of elyon. For example, keser is called elyon. The gabi atzilus atzilus in the face of bri is called elyon. The whole idea of elyon and tachting is not some true reality when you're dealing with the ein sof. Because that's the point of Ein Sof. Ein Sof says, it's infinite. It's the core essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He didn't change in Elyeinim over the Tachtein, in, in the Elyeinim area, domain over the Tachteinim. Ki Moshe Neshama, now like we said before, that from the perspective of the Neshama, before it invests into Eilam, into the, into the system of the body, before it enters into the nerve system, its connection to the brain and to the foot, correct, is equal that's the point in a Shama which is not divided at all. To say, oh, that's a superior kayach and that's an inferior kayach. From the perspective of the neshama, the brain and the foot are exactly the same. There's no superiority from the foot over the brain. Because then the nefesh would have something, uh, or the brain over the foot, for example, the nefesh would, you would right away say the nefesh has something of brain in it. That's why it feels superior with the brain energy and therefore uh, over the foot energy and, or the, 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 uh, over the foot or the brain because it's inclined to the, to the brain more than the foot says that there's something clearly within the nefesh which is distinctively clear that it's in association with the nef- with the brain, but Dr. says no. The nefesh prior to entering his body has no connection and there's no expression even that you can draw distinction of any other kaychas, any other faculties of ultimately which would be manifest when it enters the body. So too, we talk about the Abishter himself, the core of Kodesh Baruch Hu before it becomes the Mamalak Laman, El Yainim, Tachtainim, it's exactly the same to Akodesh Baruch Hu. Okay, Mashkos, but Tikkunim, like it says in Tikkunim, you know, we once mentioned when we were learning Perik Memches, well, I've introduced the whole idea of Siru When you think about infinity, to infinity, what's greater? What's closer? What touches or what's, where's infinity become more excited with? A grand number? A billion? A trillion? A quintillion? Grand, great, great number. In the, as opposed to ten or five, or one. You say, well, that's infinite. Somewhat it's excited a bit a bit more about this grand number, more than simple five or two or one. But the answer is no. Not at all. Because if infinity is excited about a trillion as opposed to one, it's not truly infinite. The whole point of infinity is that the trillion and the one are exactly the same. Because somewhat if you're excited about this grand number more than the lower, the, the, the smaller number, or the one, that means you're truly not infinite. Why are you excited about that grand number? That grand number has not, no infinity in it. Yeah, if somebody wins a lot of money, and to him it's like an infinite experience, or experience of infinite uh, um, pleasure and delight. But we're talking about, by definition... Take that trillion and pull out one penny, if you're talking about money, let's say. It's no more a trillion. The whole trillion is a combination of the finite penny and the one and the ten and the fifteen and the twenty and the hundred and so until it reaches a trillion. If, it, if, if infinity is excited about a trillion over one, it's, it's not really infinite. To, in the face of infinity, trillion and one are exactly equal. This is similar to what he said before about the nefesh. And so too he says, Lagabi, the core of HaKadosh Baruch, or the etzim of HaKadosh Baruch, before the Ebrish to become this mamalakon, the whole phenomenon, the notion of Eliyim of Antachtainim, are exactly the same. And again, he brings from Zayar, Iyus, Stima, the Cholstimin, that Hashem is hidden also from the hidden worlds. It's not the hidden worlds, oh, that's really body body with Hashem, of the Stima of HaKadosh Baruch, and the revealed world, which again, we mentioned many times, hidden worlds, means to say that it's overwhelmed by Elokus, by the godly reality, and therefore the Eilam of them are hidden. Right? We want, we want to mention them many times, but you could, it's, it's easy to appreciate that the hidden worlds are much higher and deeper within Akash Baruch than the revealed worlds. Because when you say revealed worlds, the world, the Eilam Shabahim, is revealed that itself is more devoid of Elokus, of godliness. So naturally, uh, Alma di a uh, revealed world, is way inferior than Alma steaming than a hidden world. So one would say it's hidden because it's overwhelmed with the Lukus, and that well, those worlds are kind of buddy-buddy with the Ein Sof. 
Not so. The Lashon Intikulim Deibishter is called Stima the Cholstim, and he's hiding even from the worlds which are Stima the Kud In other words, Alman Stimon, even those worlds which are steaming again because they're overwhelmed with the Luchos, the Elam of them are Sasum. Because of the great manifestation of Elokus, one would say, "Oh, their buddy with the Baruch Hu," because it's so, oh, their, their whole Metzius is about Elokus. The Tikkunim the Zayir says, "No, Stimu, the Eibishter is hiding from them as well." <clears throat> the Supreme Almin Stilim, the Eibishter Sosum Vanel and Basechal Eibishter is hiding within them and concealed from them and within them exactly the same the way he hides and is concealed in the Tachtainim in this physical world just like it's hearts under the Vachim like we say Vachim Ata Kel Mistatir look at the world we know Hashem is here and Hashem is not only here everything is Hashem and Hashem is everything in Levade and sometimes we have a, a Yid can, can and should Especially with Al Tanebu writes in Tanya, even though you're not this great tzaddik, you're a benani, which you have a potent of Bahamis, the whole bonus of davening, we should we should always know this is a it's like a top secret in Perik Bay, you'd Bay's and you'd Gimel in Tanya, you'd Dalin in Tanya. Al Tanebu says, even you're a benani, there's a window which is pulled open for you as a bonus at that particular time when you're davening shachris or any other tefillah, namely the shachris, that you can tap in, so to say, to the tzaddik sensation. It's a bonus. Not because who you are, it's because Hashem opens up, calls it the Lush and Mechin, the Godless, stretches open a window that we can tap into the divine. We can have the sensation of Eden Levade. We're meant to as well, that it's supposed to somewhat give us the Kayach, the energy to go on through the entire 24 hours of our day, not to Chas Shalom violate, to be completely on par and with total symmetry with our holy Torah, Shulchan Aruch, not to Chas Shalom violate, nor in action, nor in speech, even in thought eyes and ears, it should be completely pure and so on, so we need that davening, davening is crucial, a yid without davening cannot be a from a yid throughout the entire day, a real davening not an external, we don't have to negate it, some external shuckling or whatever, we're talking about a real davening, exercising a real davening, it's not on the clock, it's something which a person can and should we're not going to go into it now, we have a certain time of the day, we become as intimate with the infinite, and that again it's not because of his virtues and merits, he can have that potent of Shemahamis, but it comes from a Baruch Hu. Look at the beginning of the chapters, you basically give me Dali and Tanya, the Abishter opens up a window, it's a bonus to the Bainani, he says you can tap in to that. In the end of Yud Gimel Al Tarebis so much kind of um uh, demonstrates that 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 grace coming from Hashem, Hareini Kaidi Be'avosum, he went into it there, not for now. So the 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 uh, so in other words, and what in, in in order to get this sensation on a daily basis, of Einim Levadi, there's nothing else other than Hakadosh Baruch and we can and we should, and and it, it, it can be real because it's really so, and it's just other things covering up as a husk over this emes. But the point of the whole Avedis Hashem is to divest, to take off these layers, to strip the layers of the Ehel of Esther of Eilam, to the Ehel of Esther, the concealment of Eilam, in order to be Megala, to reveal the Emes Hashem Leilam, the truth of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the point of davening. Davening we have, we're able to have a sensation of Enem Levadeh, but it's supposed to become the the, the, the mantra leading the entire day, that entire day should be aligned with the message of Enem Levadeh, even though we can never compare that to the actual sensation of Eidim Levadi. Then Eidim Levadi is the truth. Nonetheless, you see an Eilam which is covering over the Eivishter. Och, not to kill me, Stater, you, Hashem, are hiding in this very Eilam. Everything is you, but you're hiding. So one would say, here he's hiding. But what about in the spiritual world? There he's, because they're buddy-buddy, because they're so godly, so Hashem is not really hiding from them. Because their sasum al steaming comes the tikkunim and say no, that even there he's hiding. He and you know how much he's hiding from them exactly the way as much he's hiding from the elements, the almadis galia, the elements which are revealed. He's hiding in the same way, because from the perspective of a kodesh baruch Hu, there's no difference, there's no superiority of the elements steaming to the almin. The Isgalion, he's hiding from both of them. Because from the perspective of the core essence of a Baruch Hu, it's beyond Eilamis at all, nor this type of Eilam, the Almin Isgalion, nor the Almin Steaming. 
<clears throat> similar to the nefesh, prior it enters into the system, it has nothing within it that you can say, oh, that's the kayach and that's the kayach that's the kayach vision, that's the kayach audio. Not at all. Not even in a subtle manner. The infinite, the essence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu is equal in the elements of Yehi and Atzilus and beyond that. Just like he is in exactly the same fashion in the face vis a vis the 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 vis a vis the the tachtayim the the inferior worlds the Almanis Galim exactly the same. It's not divisions. And as he says, Kimeshahu, exactly the way he says it now, Mabachtani. Kiles Mashavat Fisa Beklal, because there's no thought could ever be grasped by Kodesh Baruch, even though the Elim is Elyanin. Even the system superior Elim is, Hashem is beyond that. So what we said from the perspective of the Nefesh and the Moshe last week, the brain and the foot is equal. It doesn't have any tiya, it doesn't have any gravitation to the brain because it's a superior kayach and eventually that will become the host of the Nefesh, the nerve system, and from there everything will be will evolve and manifest. No, before it enters, it doesn't have anything within itself that you can pinpoint in a, in, a, in, a, in a clear, distinctive manner, this is a kaycha brain, and therefore, as such, has a superiority of the kaycha brain. There's nothing of that. No divisions in the nefesh. And what do you? What come? What do we infer from his commission? That tells us just like he is there, exactly the same way he's there. In other words, there's a kind of a comforting part, a comforting. Um, twist to this also. Yes, he's concealed from every single Eilam. The Eilam is Alma de Izgalia and Alma de Iskasia. The Almin Stimin have exactly, they're also far and he hides from them in the same way than the Alma de Izgalia. On the other hand, you, we, we, we infer, uh, we can derive from this that the Ebeshter is found there just like he's found in Tachtainim, or just like he's there, Nimtza also with Tachtainim Mamish. In other words, Hashem is where, where is Hashem more? In Atzilus, in Elam Same way. In the same fashion. So in S, there's a comfort. I just, you know, when I learned this, this, this Patek, you see in the beginning he speaks about the Stima, the Kodesh Baruch Hu because naturally he's transcended and higher. To the extent that Elam is in Elam and Tachtainim is Kulam Shava, they're exactly the same. But conversely, if you, he, he, Al-Tarebbe Kalim says this line, in Nimtza, Kameshah Shmatsu Shom, Kachim Mitzvah Tachtainim Mamash, that just like he's there, he's here. So if you find out how much is Nashem and Atzilus, which is a, Atzilus is a Eilam Sasum in comparison to Bri Yitzir We know it many times, Achsidus, based on Kabbalah, there is the compartmentalization. Atzilus is a world which is Sasum, Atzlev is Samachloi. As opposed to Bri at the beginning of Eschalos Hayesh, we spoke about it many times. As we have Nisham, as some Allah, Gadim Ganein Ha'elim, but it's already a Mitzias. There's an is there. And Atzilus is all about a Lukus, Le'igur Chara. There's not even a subtle Yesh. Everything is a Lukus. That's why Atzilus is part of the Almin Stimin. <clears throat> Expression of different Maimorim, the Friedrich Rebbe has in the, in, in the, in the famous Maimor Basi Legani, this course Basi Legani, right? So Atzilus is Bechlalus Ha'elim as Ein It's part of the Ein Sof. Uh, but it's not the Ein because the Ein Sof wouldn't be Oilam Atzilus with Midois measurements and distinctions and Pratsufim and Spheris and so on. And even though the Pratsufim and Spheris, one idea basically, basically, but nonetheless, this doesn't exist in the face of Ein Sof, but nonetheless, it's Bechlal Elam Ein Sof. It's a Oilam Sosum. So Hashem is in Atzilus. You know, that Hashem which is in Atzilus is exactly the way He's over here. And Atzilus does not have any superiority or an advantage from the in the face of the Ein Sof, the Etzem, the core essence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, more than Elam Asiyas. As much as he's hidden from both, also the Rebbe feels compelled to say the Nimtza Kemoshim Motzi, rather Kemoshim Motzi Shom Kam Nimtza Batachdei Nimamish. In the same fashion, he's found over here. So, what's the difference of the Elam Asaliyim Batachdei? He said the difference is. Once Hashem decides, and we're going to pick up on this, Ezrat Hashem this coming week, the difference is when Hashem decides to invest into Elamis, create them, vivify them, vitalize them, memale kol almin, that's where there begins this whole phenomenon of an Elam Elyin to an Elam Tachtin. And again, in so many different uh, levels, 
Is al tenoshin al tereba infinite amount of levels? But there you have el yainim and tachtainim. Similar to get back to the mushal. Let's try to draw the mushal parallel to the nimshal. When the neshama does enter into the body, and it stay and it situates itself primarily in the nerve system, which we're going to find that in the mushal also. What is the nerve system which Hashem enters into primarily? As the first, the main station which holds his energy, we're going to find that also the meichin kaviyachal of of the oilamis, which is the chachma binadas, just like it is in the mashal. We'll get to that as well. But where we're holding over here, where does the whole phenomenon of eliyenu matachtein starts only when the Yibishter decides to be mamalik kalam and enter into oilamis, as a po- and is similar to the nefesh. When the, the, does these divisions? Can there were the commencement of these divisions. When do they start? When do, when does this all transpire? When the nefesh enters into the system. Yes, he enters first into the nerve system, which is the brain, and from there it, it evolves and becomes manifest in the entire system of the body. And there there are distinctions. The kayachariya is a very sensitive and complex and sophisticated kayach has a certain uniqueness, and therefore it's able to enter into that sophisticated container, which is the eyeball. And so too when it comes to the hearing and the feet to walk and so on. So then there is divisions, and then there's obviously the vital organ and the vital, the non-such vital organ, and the kayach, which is mahav mechaya, that which gives kayach, which gives the ability, let's say, for example, the heart to pump. This is an enormous kayach coming from the nefesh, and there it's already distinctive. And that's unique as opposed to a kayach, which is in the end of the day, inferior, which is the kayach to walk, obviously you can't compare it to the kayach of the heart and the kayach of the brain, for that matter, which is the main station which contains the nefesh. Yeah, that all happens once the nefesh enters into the system like we learned last week. And so too, when the just starts to become a memalakal almin, that's when there is el and tachtainim and so on, as we're going to learn be'ezrat Hashem. But prior to that, the, the, to repeat these words, Kemosh of Motsi Shom, I'm referring to the Mahusei Vatsmusei Shalein Tzav Baruch quoting over here, the core of the Ein Tzav is found there, exactly like he's found in Tachtainim. He's found in Tachtainim, rather. He's found in the inferior worlds, even in El Mazah exactly the way he's found in the Almin Stim, in the hidden worlds. Accordingly, we will look forward, continuing... Zrat Hashem, this Nimshul, have a wonderful week.